Hi, this is Lisa Crosby, fresh from Ignite March 2021, looking at the new feature releases, and there are plenty of them here in Dynamics 365, Power Platform and Microsoft Teams. Here's my top 10 in 10 minutes across those feature areas. So I'm going to keep you in suspense here and go from 10 to 1. I will give you a hint that the number one feature is like my number one ask that I was most hoping for out of anything this year. So please stay tuned so I can tell you about that. At number 10 here, we have dynamic view in Microsoft Teams. There's a few features in my top 10 here, which are about using Teams as a presenter and as a participant, big theme coming through. The dynamic view allows you to kind of change what's going on, depending on whether you're running a small meeting or an all hands or a you know a group with a lot of engagement and so on so we're going to get different things in different parts of the screen and you can mix it up depending on what you're doing so what we see here is one where you can have the gallery across the top to help with eye contact as you're presenting absolutely love that as a concept at number nine, Teams Connect. This is a feature where you can create a shared Teams channel, which you know you can do with sharing Teams at the moment, but sharing a channel with external users that will appear in their home tenant. <laughs> Yay, proper collaboration on documents, um, working you know together with uh, people external to your organization. I know that's something that uh, I need to do a lot. So really excited to see that one in the mix there. At number eight, Power Automate Desktop, which is the robotic process automation functionality, allows you to automate against uh, desktop applications and web-based applications that don't have an API, is now included for free with Windows 10. So I think this is about getting a, a broader reach with this technology. Um, there's really moves in the platform here to make low code, just broader reach, more accessible to more people. I think this is one of those things. So if you haven't had a go yet with Power Automate Desktop and you've got Windows 10, no barrier to entry except the learning curve. So please get into that and have a look at it. At number seven, granular control over data loss prevention policies. There's actually two features I'm bundling in together here. One of them is called Connector Actions and one is called the Endpoint Connector. This is for people who are admins in Power Platform. You wanna be able to block or um, restrict certain connectors in the Power Platform. And this is like one of the top asks in that area. At the moment, you can classify things into business, non-business, or block them entirely, this allows you more granular control. So the example we saw today was around using the Twitter connector, and then it gives you a list of all of the actions that connector can do, and you can toggle them on or off. Um, endpoint connector allows you to kind of choose what endpoints you're allowing with your connectors as well. So lots here that are enabling more granular control over what's going on with connectors in the platform. PowerFX, a new name. PowerFX is the name for the uh, language that you use to build Canvas apps today. This is an expression language, very similar to Excel. So if you're working with Canvas apps, don't panic, nothing changes. It just now, that expression language just now has a name. But behind that bigger picture going on there is that this becomes an open source language. It gets developed um, to be, you know, I think more and more like what happens with Excel um, so that we're basically reaching Excel users and the remit here or the, the talk around this is like what if it was as easy to build an app as it was to build a spreadsheet so this is really kind of opening this up and attracting again another move here to get more people into low code application building Future state, looking ahead, PowerFX is going to be used in other parts of the platform. It seems like model-driven apps and Power Virtual Agent is where we're going to see it first. So definitely watch this space. There's going to be some exciting things coming around that. Fusion teams, citizens and professionals together. Very much about a story here which has both low-code and um, high code at its heart. So if you're into that kind of open source and starting to treat that as a um, as a language, uh, there's something in that for you as well. All right, at number five, I'm cheating a bit here. 
<laughs> bundling two into one again. I said there are a few things coming in around um, the presenter mode in Microsoft Teams. So presenter mode is the thing that allows you to kind of superimpose yourself over the top of your presentation or next to your presentation or whatever. And PowerPoint Live, I actually used this one already today, allows you to share your PowerPoint deck in a way that just comes up in a space on the screen where you can see ahead to all of your slides, you can see your notes and you can still see the chat and you can see all of the people in the meeting. I have to say, from my experience of using that one this morning, that was absolutely awesome. I was doing a presentation where I actually wanted to skip ahead into different parts of the presentation. It was a little bit ad hoc and I could scroll through and click on a slide and that was what was showing up. I could still engage with people in the meeting. You know, So many times you see people go, oh, I'm presenting PowerPoint in full view and now I can't see the participants or the chat or whatever. So get your head around this one. That's going to make it easier. And lots of things here in Teams about making presenters look good. This idea of virtual presentations and the reality of, of the way that we all work now and that that's not entirely going to go away. Um, the, these features are, are really going to help us with that. So this is an example of the um, presenter view. You can see their presenter, uh, you know, in front of her presentation and the PowerPoint view that I was just talking about there. So you can see you're fully engaged in the meeting, um, much, much more able to do that than just losing your whole screen to the full PowerPoint view. At number four here, we have Power Virtual Agents. Now, one of these features was actually uh, announced in the Wave 1 release, which is a new AI feature. And this is very much about being able to um, have the bot learn from what it's what, what it's experiencing with triggering topics and things. So we've got a couple of things that have been announced in here. One of them is a, um, a feature that will look for overlapping topics. So where, you know, that thing where the bot has to say, I don't understand which one did you mean to, to address that, um, as well as the one that was announced in the Wave 1 release about the, the bot being able to learn and improve its performance. So some really, really clever AI coming into Power Virtual Agents there and certainly things that I know people have been asking for. All right, and then the three big features here. Firstly, customer journey orchestration. This is a big move from Dynamics 365 Marketing, really positioning it now as a B2C marketing platform and rethinking marketing automation. Marketing automation is old school. This is about taking customer experience, highly personalized journeys and customer experience with marketing and sales and service genuinely all working together. Really excited about this. There are trigger points that, that allow you to do things in the moment to tailor the experience for the customer, um, trigger points coming out of interactions that they're having with you all the way. So, you know, breaking apart that idea of just starting with segments and having a nurture journey, this is going to be fully interactive across the whole way with the customer journey. So I uh, can't wait to get my hands on that one and uh, and start working with it. At number two, this is a close call for number one, but this one, Teams as a webinar platform. Teams is really being positioned now. We've got a new function in there. Uh, live meeting is still a thing, but as well as that new webinar. You can register people, send an email confirmation out to them. It's going to be integrated with Dynamics Marketing as well so that you can go and do all of those other things there. But this is really an option to be able to position Teams as a webinar platform and you could possibly get rid of your third party webinar provider um, in due course of this being released um, over this year, I'd say. So have a close look at this. If you're paying a lot of money for, um, for another webinar provider, you may no longer need to do that. And here we go. Number one, this is like my absolute favorite thing that I was hoping to see. Dynamics 365 loves Microsoft Teams. They've been using the heart in the uh, in the presentations all day. This is getting chat functionality in Dynamics 365. Unbelievably awesome. So this is a screenshot of it for bonus points with the new Dynamics 365 sales dashboards that we're going to get. How great does this look? You'll see the chat functionality on the side. So you can chat now in the context of what's going on in Dynamics. Um, I've also seen in the blog, you can at mention a Dynamics opportunity from Teams, but this is something that everyone has been asking for. And I'm uh, very excited to see that as part of the Dynamics platform. We've got chat 
in team uh, chatting teams <laughs> chat in dynamics 365 amazing so here we go there's my top 10 in a nutshell um, very much about you know dynamics and three dynamics 365 and teams working together heaps of new teams present to things to really help you kind of look awesome doing your virtual events and make it easier for you as a presenter um, new power fx language free stuff with um, with uh, the Power Automate desktop in Windows 10, some great AI going on in Power Virtual Agents and data loss prevention policies getting more granular. Lots to enjoy there. Um, lots to look forward to. I hope that's been helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel here if you'd like more tips and tricks on Dynamics, Power Platform and Microsoft Teams.